Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to learn the simplest way for saving and loading data in Unity. Let's begin. So, as you're making your game, you will eventually have to deal with saving and loading. So, in the scene here, I have a character and he can mine for gold. The text object is displaying the total gold amount that he is carrying. I can move him around and tell him to go to a gold node and he starts mining and you can see the counter going up. Now we want to save the player position and the amount of gold that he's carrying. Okay, so let's look at the code. The character implements this interface in here. We can get the position of the player with this function and we can get the gold amount that he is carrying. This is what we're going to use to save our data. Then we have a set position and a set gold amount. This is what we're going to use when loading. So first let's take care of saving. So let's go to the game handler and in here, Let's add a button to save our data. So first let's make a private void update and inside the update let's do an input dot get key down let's say key code dot s this is going to be our save button. So in here save. So in here let's gather the info that we need to save. First we need the player position. So a vector 3 for the player position and we're going to go into the unit and get the position. So for testing, let's add a pop-up to view the save position. So for that, I'm going to go into the cmdebug class, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab from unitycodemonkey.com. And in there, I'm going to use the text pop-up on the mouse position, and I'm going to display the player position. Okay, let's test. Okay, here I am, and when I hit S, yep, you can see he's on 0, 0, 0, and if I move him around, he's now different. Okay, great, so we are correctly grabbing the position that we want to save. So now let's store that position. In this video, we're saving and loading using player preps, which is the simplest way to save persistent data in Unity. In a later video, we're going to cover saving and loading to a file. So first, let's cover what are player preps. Player preps is the cross-platform way to store persistent data in Unity. On Windows, the player preps get stored in the registry. So let's go into our code, and in here, when we hit save, after we grab the player position, let's save it using player preps. Now, player prefs doesn't actually have a native function for storing a vector 3, so we're going to store two floats. Two floats in this case, since we're working in 2D, so we don't need the Z. So in here, we go into player prefs and set a float. In here, you give the name of the field that you wish to save. So let's say player position X, and I'm going to save the player position dot X. Do the same thing for the Y. Okay. Now the player prefs are automatically saved to the disk when the game exits, but in order to support saving and loading whilst we're in game, we're going to manually trigger a save. So do player prefs dot save. Okay. So now let's run the code and see if it saves. Okay, here I am. Let's move them in there, in there. Okay, hit S and there you go, 25, 1.3. So we should have saved our player prefs. So now let's go and look in the registry and see if it was correctly saved. So here we are in the registry. On Windows, it is on Computer, HKey, Current User, Software, Unity, Unity Editor, then the name of your company and the name of the product. And in here you can see Player Position X and Player Position Y. If you are running the standalone version instead of the editor, it will be on a different place. It will no longer be on Unity, Unity Editor. It will be directly on Software, Company Name, and Product Name. Okay, so this is just so we confirm that we are actually saving data. The registry is persistent data, so you know the save will still be there when you close Unity. On Mac and Linux, the location is different. On Mac is on Library Preferences, and on Linux is on Config Unity 3D. So let's look at where you define the company name and product name. So in the editor, go into Edit, Project Settings, and Player. And in here you can see the company name and the product name. Alright, so we confirmed that we are saving, now let's handle loading. So in here let's make another if input.getKeyDown of key code, let's say L for loading. So in here we're going to load. So in here on load, let's grab the player position. But again, we sorted it as float, so let's grab both floats. So a float for the player position X. We're going to go into player prefs and get the float that we named player position X. Do the same thing for the Y. And now we have the data to 
create our vector three. So vector three player position equals a new vector three with the X and the Y. All right, so this code lets us grab our player prefs that we saved previously. Do a pop up on that file position and let's test. So here I am and if I hit L, yep, there you go, the pop up and he correctly loaded what we stored in the player prefs. So again, I can move him around. Let's say he's in here. I'm going to save 3416. Now I'll move him away and I'm going to load and again, 3416. Okay, so we got saving and loading correctly working through player prefs. So now that we are correctly loading the player position, let's actually set the position on our unit. So unit.setPosition and set it to the player position. Okay, so let's see if our unit now correctly teleports to the loaded position. So here he is on the default 00, and if I hit L, yep, there you go, he teleported to the position where he saved. So I can move him in here, there you go, he's in there, save, move up there, up there, up there, and now I hit load, and yep, there you go, he loaded the position. Okay, great. So now let's handle what happens if we have no save to load. Since player prefs is pretty much a dictionary, we also have a function called has key. We can use this to check if a save exists. So before we try to grab any floats, let's do a has key. So if player prefs dot has key, and let's say any of them, so player position X, if he does have this key, then we're going to assume that we have a correct save data. If not, then no save is available. So just for testing, let's go up here and clear out the player preps. So do player preps dot delete all. So now when we run, all of our player preps should be deleted, which should trigger this to say no save. Then we can save and load again and make sure this logic is working correctly. Okay, here I am moving around. And now if I hit L, yep, there you go. No save since we cleared out the save when we started. And now if I move him in here, I hit S, I've saved. Now I move him away and now I hit L and there you go. He correctly loaded the previous state. Okay, great. All right, so now let's sort the resource amount as well. So first let's clean up this code and put it in separate functions. So go down here, make a private void save and a private void load to keep our code nice and clean. Let's copy everything in here. Okay, so now on our save, let's grab the resource amount. So that resource amount is an int, so the gold amount, and is on unit.getGoldAmount. We store the position as floats, and then we store the set int for our gold amount, and we're going to store our gold amount. Then we save our player prefs and so on. Let's pop up save. And then on our load, we grab the position X, the position Y, then let's grab an int for the gold amount. And we're going to go into int of the gold amount. And down here, after we set the position, then do unit.set the gold amount to our loaded gold amount. All right. So now in this case, we actually have a save that we saved previously, and the save does have player position X and Y, but does not have a gold amount. In order to cover that potentiality, we can use the get int and then add a default value in case that key does not exist in the dictionary. So in this case, grab the gold amount and let's say a default of zero if the key does not exist. This is very useful if you're making your game and you change what you want to save. You can still allow the loading of save files from previous versions and just set the new values as the defaults. So in this case, our previous save does not contain a gold amount, so we can make sure that it returns zero since the key does not exist in the player prefs dictionary. All right, let's test. Okay, everything's on default. He's on zero, zero with zero of gold. And now if I hit L, yep, we unload in the previous position and the gold amount is zero. So now let's mine some gold, go in there and mine that gold. Okay, one, two, let's say three. Okay, stop. Now let's hit save. Okay, we have saved. Now let's reset our scene. Okay, we're back on default, zero, zero with zero gold. And if I hit L, yep, there you go. We unload the correct position with three gold amount. And again, everything still works. I can still tell him to mine more and you see four, five, six, and so on. Nice save in here, go down here. 
grab some more there you go eight nine now i load and goes back up there back with six okay great so there you have it we learned a very simple way of saving and loading data using player prefs we looked at where those player prefs are stored and how we can use the default values to keep save files valid between versions in the next video we're going to cover how we can save and load data into a file as always you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com if you have any questions post them in the comments and i'll do my best to answer them Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.